Okay, so the patch notes are finally here and let's go through of them since there's quite a lot to go through. So first the big change will be the mythic raid. Now unfortunately I am not able to see the exact skills of the raid yet since the update is not live in NA servers. However, uh, there have been some screenshots from the Discord and yeah, it looks like this this will require you to build some new units because uh, it has several complete white passives. Uh, there's passives that do not allow you to use stuff like Perna, stuff like damage dealers scaling with debuffs, aka Argen, Kamiya, uh, Nadinha and all of that. Uh, this raid does not allow you to lose Eleonora and any other unit that reduce a cool time of skills so yeah it will be interesting to see how the meta changes i feel like they just went all out and we'll have to see how it works here uh, but there's a lot of details here it looks like just apart from the raid there's also like raid rankings for it right so as mentioned earlier uh this raid will last four months and it will get easier each week so essentially each week uh, that you do not be the raid there will be a little bit of a bonus stats given to you so that it becomes a little bit easier to clear right this is of course a party raid you need three people in here and yeah there's also a ranking rewards in here so you can see that a ranking will be registered based on each server right it's not like global and the ranking will be registered based on entrance time and the ranking tally will be based on the dungeon clear time right so uh, whoever clears the dungeon faster, this looks like will get a higher rank, right? And the ranking will be registered up to rank 30. And based on these ranks, there will be some additional rewards as well, right? And for the reward themselves, uh, this is what you get. So if you clear the dungeon, you get a six star mythic weapon, which will essentially be similar to runes, right? It has four substats and it has a fifth stat that only works in PvP, right? Uh, you get sky stones, ancient coins, which are essentially like uh, using for the specific raid shop, and gold. And about this dungeon, it looks like this one is not refreshable with energy, at least based on the uh, notice here. But we'll see how it works, right? And the ranking rewards, uh, here they are. So rank one gets uh, two selection boxes for the mythic weapon. So yeah, if you get like top it looks like it will be very easy to create a set for this uh, whole new item right uh, all the way up to rank 30 you still get a single selection box a bunch of crystals a bunch of ancient coins so that will definitely make it easier to acquire the whole set and the raid is unlocked once you clear act 9 chapter 2 for any other summoner apart from heath and for heats you have to clear act 9 chapter 4 right and in the shop, so it looks like these items are actually going to be like an upgrade to your current items, not just the new sets, right? The good thing about that is they did say it will be available from blacksmithing later on. It is not available right now based on what they said, but it will be available later on. So even if you do not uh, get the items from here, you will be able to upgrade your current items, it looks like, right? And yeah, for the shop items, it looks like 800 coins for each of these new weapons, right? Uh, Legendary Magic Resource Box, no clue what that is so far, but yeah, just the regular raid items that are available from all shops. And with this raid, there's new uh, exclusive sets as well. So there's a Beast End and a Beast Grudge. So, Beast End, uh, if the target's HP is less than 7% when you attack the enemy in the arena or siege battle, deals fixed damage equal to the target's max HP, acquires 2 mana if the target is defeated with the attack. So it's essentially like an execute if the target is 7% or less, right? Like, if you attack him, it looks like it does say attack, so it should include basic attacks as well. Uh, but yeah, it looks like if the enemy is 7 HP and below, regardless of what attack you use, right, it will just be an execute. However, since it does say the damage is equal to max HP, I'm guessing if they have something like a shield which is higher than their max HP, it might not be an execute, right? But also there's a 15 second cooldown, so I'm not a big fan of that set so far. 
I'm definitely a bigger fan of the Abyss Grudge set, right? And for this one, consumes 3% of the max HP every 3 seconds and acquires level 1 curses of Abyss. Increases damage dealt by 1% and decreases damage taken by 1% for each level of the Curse of Abyss. Uh, turns into the Lord of the Abyss when level 10 Curse of Abyss is reached. So essentially after 30 seconds, you get a 15 second timer where your damage dealt is increased by 20% and damage taken inc decreased by 20% and accelerates the skill cooldown by 35%. So this one I definitely see being used quite a bit, right? I'm not sure if it will uh, like outmatch the current sets that we have, uh, but I'm interested to see how it works out, right? And yeah, here's some more details about the shiny mythic equipment uh, rate tier, right? So essentially it's just a PvP property that only works in PvP content, right? It does not affect PvE at all. So for weapons, uh, the available ones are PvP crit rate, accuracy and crit damage, so mainly offensive stuff. And for the sub weapon, it will be crit damage taken down, crit resistance and regular resistance, right? So it's just more of a defensive stats. And yeah, for PvP properties, uh, they are applied to the battle power only in PvP content looks like. Uh, PvP property cannot be defined when you define equipment, so like whatever you get uh, is what you get, right? But the finding kit catalyst cannot be used either, so if you get like an A tier, you're gonna you're sort of like stuck with an A tier, right? And granted PvP property will be succeeded only when the target's equipment and the material equipment are both shiny method equipment, right? And now the most weighted or the least for some people weighted feature is the White Knight Summon. So these are the scrolls where in the first season you are able to acquire one of the two units either the dark panda or the light warrior right so for pity you need 200 scrolls however if you do get the monster within those 200 uh the summons will eventually like essentially stop right even if you don't reach the pity you will not be able to summon them anymore because you have gotten the unit from there right and yeah, it looks like light and dark monsters other than the target monster won't appear from the night white knight summon so it looks like you don't even get like net trees or net fours from this it just straight up you either summon and you either get the net five or you don't right like it's like a blank scroll that can only summon net five so i'm not sure how that will work out but we'll see yeah and yeah, uh, there's a lot of ways to acquire these, uh, there are packs for them, I'm not able to show them yet since uh, the maintenance isn't over in NA, but there's a lot of packs and there's a few events of how you can get them as well. And yeah, it looks like one of the ways how you can get them will be the White Knight Summon Event Dungeon. So based on the description of this, it's gonna be similar to the one that we had when Fady Kings released, right? Uh, it will be like a Challenge Garden Event Dungeon. And yeah, there you will be able to enter it a hundred times every week, right? It will last for, what is that, like three weeks, I believe, until the May 9th. And you will get certain buffs in there. So the Light Paladin and the Dark Panda will get 100% stat increases to their attack, defense, HP, and attack speed, right? So if you do have one of those, you can uh, think of using them, right? I'm not sure how impactful Light Paladin will be there since it's sort of like a very tanky defensive monster and usually you need like offensive stuff there. Uh, but the Dark Panda should definitely see some use in there, right? So I'm gonna, I don't know, I'll try it out. I have the Light Paladin so we'll see whether it's impactful at all, right? And we'll see if I can even make a guide for that dungeon. Now, next up, the Valkyrie uh, artifacts, right? The legendary artifacts for new Valkyria units. And yeah, uh, the Fire One grants level 3 attack up addition to the Divide target for 20 seconds when Warrior's Saturn or Ultimate Warrior's Saturn is used, and the moves one half effect on itself and grants level 3 continuous recovery for 20 seconds. If all team members are alive, grants level one skill acceleration on itself for 14 seconds when skill of fire is used. Um, I mean, it's probably gonna be better than whatever artifact she has right now, since knights don't exactly have like amazing artifacts. They're really like sort of meh. I'm not sure how good this one either, though. Right? Like, it's just a little bit of a buff to the level of buffs 
that you get, right? And skill acceleration. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of uh, fire one. Water. Use the seal of water with 50% chance when attacked with a critical hit. And that has a 5 second cooldown. Decrease the crit damage taken of all team members by 60%. And that covers the summoner by 5% of his max HP when HP is recovered for his first aid. Okay, yeah, this one. This one looks strong. If I understand correctly, her passive is 120% and this alpha gives an additional 60%. So she is going to mitigate 180% crit damage. So essentially, if you have a 400 crit damage uh, unit, that is cut in half, right? So that is going to be insane. I've been seeing quite a bit of Water Valkyries already. And yeah, th this artifact is going to be crazy i think this is definitely a very good one definitely a very good one wind additionally grants level one attack up to itself for 20 seconds when sword of promise is used uh sword of promise i believe is the first skill where she gets the buff and grants level three critical rate up uses the sword of discharge one more time with a 40 percent chance when her nuke like her second skill is used so interesting so it has a chance to double the nuke and it also charges her invincibility because she needs level 4 attack up to get invincibility, right? She gets level 3 attack up from her first skill and she gets an additional level 1 attack up from the artifact. So that essentially gives her the ability to have invincibility after just using the first skill once, right? So I think this this will be insane right for anyone who uses her i think this will be an insane one i'm probably not gonna summon i'm not a big fan of katarina so far like i like her using with some niche comps but i don't see her using being used too often overall right but yeah this definitely eases the condition to get her invincibility because previously you needed either the invincibility or another attack buffer something like a fire kina or any other separate unit. Now she is just able to get invincibility by herself, so it should definitely make her more viable, right? Now, light and dark ones. I have both of them, so let's see. Our guns level two defense down to itself and nearby enemies. Now, do not be worried about the itself part because she is immune to defense break, and whenever she gets the defense break, she cleanses it and she gets. Uh, I believe it's is it defense up or attack up? I don't even remember. It might be both as well. Uh, for 20 seconds each time the monster is hit when Seal of Light is used. Uh, the moves one harmful effect on itself when defense down is replaced with defense up. Yeah, there we go. It replaces uh, defense down with defense up. Uh, with God's Shield and increases the damage dealt by 5% additionally with each defense up level. Okay, so she essentially gets 10% just from the artifact because she gets level 2 defense break which will be replaced with level 2 defense up. So that's 10% by itself, right? I don't know, it's an interesting one, but nothing crazy, I feel like, right? Just a little bit of a cleanse, I guess. That helps, right? Dark one. Oh, Trinity. Grants level 1 attack up on itself and grants level 2 drain on the allies within range for 20 seconds once Sword of Promise is used. When targets is defeated with Ragnarok or Ultimate Ragnarok, in the arena or siege battle, grants endure on all team members for 10 seconds and increases summoner's mana by 2 for each defeated target. I mean, the mana should help a bit. I, ju I just don't think that's enough. I don't know. I tested her like a week ago. I never even uploaded that video because it was just like that bad. She just didn't win anything at all for me. I don't think that's enough. I don't think that's enough. And also, there's this. Grants endure on all team members for 10 seconds. 10 seconds for wait so if she defeats the target is that correct let me see yeah when a target is defeated so you only get endure when the target is defeated but what if your units are lower than enemies and you kill your units before you defeat the enemies right i don't know i don't know if the if she gave endure regardless when you use the second skill then I could see it being really strong, right? But now you need to actually defeat the target. And when you bring Trinity, like she does big damage. But the moment the enemy has like a decent healer, uh, that damage is absolutely useless. So mm, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Not a massive fun so far, right? And yeah, since uh, the Valkyria artifacts are being uh, 
created so you will be able to summon them for almost a month it looks like as well from uh, the artifact banners right there will be an artifact banner event as well so you can get a few of these silver artifact seals back there's also new transmogs that are coming out so the fairy king and the unicorns are being released pretty cool Okay, it looks like the hero raid is being revamped as well, right? So since the metric raid is the new team dungeon, hero raid is becoming a single player dungeon as well. And it will have two modes. It will have normal mode, so no ranking, right? And ranking mode uh, where you are able to compete with other people for some extra rewards, right? So how it works is essentially the hero raid will now be three random dungeons. And I believe, yeah, they are listed here. So, for example, first round until the end of the week, uh, the dungeon will be Foggy Prism, White Shadow Castle, and Boiling Waterfall, right? And uh, you need to clear all three of these dungeons, and you will get a total time uh, for all three of them, which will be used in the ranking, right? And whoever clears the dungeon the fastest will be the ones higher up on the rankings. And here's the rewards. A shiny mythic weapon random box so it looks like you do get some mythic weapons all the way for top 10 right uh, however they are random um, the previous ones were selection boxes these are random right heroic accessory selection box so this will help you with uh, the hero accessories a bit right since these ones you can actually select uh, you'll be getting some symbols and some crystals right so the boards look like the bigger ones are for top 100, but even if you are lower on the board, like 101 or more, you still get some rewards for it. And now a bit of changes for the regular raids, right? The hero raids. Uh, it looks like... Wait, is it the hero raids? It, it does say... Yeah, hero raid is the one that was the highest up until now. They did say there will be like... The ability to use quick battles in the regular race, like the regular foggy prison, regular meters, all of that. I am guessing that that might be an option for this one as well, because look at this. It does not specify that it's for regular raid. It's still under the hero day tab. And you can enter by using the dungeon ticket and you will be able to purchase the entrance count with energy. Yep. Quick battle and the beat battle are available to you. So we'll see whether you are actually able to quick battle hero with aids as well. Because if that's the case, that's quite amazing. Next up for all my outfit lovers, uh, the big booba, orbi and soleda transmogs are coming out, right? These will not be available to be obtained with free to play means, right? They do mention that. Uh, there will be some sort of uh, update in the future notice on how you can get it, but for now this one is available for all, uh, it looks like shop only. And now for some smaller updates, right? So as mentioned, mythic weapons are not available so far in the blacksmithing, but they will be available in the future, right? For book changes, uh, collection challenges, of course, and another week is being added. You have seen all of the challenges in the previous patch notes video if you are interested what items are required uh, they are also adding two new entries to joshua's bookshelf so it looks like you will need to uh mess around with dark Harpo, light howl fire dragon and water garuna in order to unlock the rewards right uh the next illusion garden will be the four star light inogami and now the rest are sort of like very uh quality of life features however if this works uh, the way I understand it, this is amazing. Previously, if you wanted to use your Destiny Dice, right, you had to use your Destiny Dice before using the Crystal options. Based on what they're saying there, it seems like you now will be able to use the Crystal option and if you choose to, use the Destiny Dice option after the Crystal. And this is amazing. This is amazing because Previously, uh, the thing with Destiny Dice is even if you use the Destiny Dice, right, you still had the option to use the Crystals. However, if you used uh, the Destiny Dice and you got a good unit, right, you lost the option to use that 10,000 Crystal uh, V-Roll, which should technically be used first in pretty much all cases because even if you get a dupe with that uh, 10,000 crystal reroll, you still have the destiny dice to fall on, right? 
whereas with destiny dices if you use them first and you got uh, a non dupe for example and you still wish to reroll if you got the dupe afterwards with the crystals it was sort of like you lost out right you lost out and especially if in the cases where you do not have the destiny rice right if you use 10,000 crystals first and you still get a dupe you are able to fall back on that destiny dice whereas if you didn't have the destiny dice uh, in stock right once you use that 10,000 crystals you are sort of like forced to get the dupe so yeah if you are able to use the crystal option before the destiny dice this will be amazing now there are some changes to the guild siege right so it looks like they are sticking to the once per week format right and there is no notice unfortunately of the rewards increasing from chess however they are adding additional rewards based on the ranking right so uh, the siege it will work once per week right however at the end of every week it looks like you will be getting additional siege seals are based on where you currently play so let's say rank one it gets 500 siege seals all the way to the lowest ranking which is 401 and lower which will get 200 of these and these siege seals can be used to purchase various items so white knight scrolls for those lion dagna fives and some legendary uh, books galaxy stones all of that so pretty pretty good and as time goes on, of course, the five-star Fairy Queen will be available both from the selection ticket and the monster piece uh, exchange. And of course, for those interested and those who haven't received the transmogs from the previous arena rewards, uh, the idol Polar Queen transmogs, both the RGB variants and the light and dark variants, are now available to purchase from the arena and brawl shops. Now next up we have some new events and this, oh come to us, you are really pushing it. Destiny Dice Restoration Center. Now I, I know it doesn't uh, show the whole notice but essentially how this works is every time you use Destiny Dice to reroll a dupe you are getting one entry in here. Based on the description it does not count the crystal rerolls, it only counts the Destiny Dice, however that is yet to be confirmed, uh, I don't think anyone confirmed it yet. But yeah, essentially every time you use a Destiny Dice, you are able to claim 50 of these uh, new Light and Dark selection. Not selection, what I call White Knight Scrolls, right? So yeah, um, I mean, <laughs> if you use four dupes, you're just straight up able to claim that either the Dark Panda or the Light Paladin, right? And there will be more events, right? So this is the uh, Challenge Garden one. I'm guessing it's going to be very similar to the one... Uh, where we had when we released the uh, what they called Fairy Queens, right? Not Fairy Queens, Fairy Kings. I'm guessing it's gonna be something similar to that because I'm seeing uh, a score based on millions, right? Uh, there's some rewards here. Yet to see what the later ones are, but I'm guessing it will be like just regular event rewards plus the White Knight scrolls as well, right? And there will be also a separate shop for that, right? So. Yeah, shop items, I don't know how hard they are get, they don't look amazing, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, like 10 mystical scrolls, a few rainbow ones, not even enough to evolve once, right, like, eh, nothing special. And there's also Conquer the Mythic Raids, so obviously once you clear Mythic Raids, uh, based on the amount of times you clear, you will be able to get some rewards. So from here, mystical scrolls, silver artifact seals, gold artifact seals, there's probably gonna be a little bit more later on as well. And lastly, of course, the artifact summons, which I've already mentioned with the banners, uh, you are able to get some back once you summon a total of 300. And yeah, apart from that, there's a lot of bug fixes. If you want to look through those, feel free to pause the video. I won't cover all of them. And yeah, that's about it. Peace.